Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Driven Shot Podcast. I am Omar Hawash, and he is Jamie Coles. I am indeed. Jamie, how are you doing? I'm good. How have you been? I'm good. How are you? That is a good start. I'm good too. <laughs> you know, it's been it's been a, it's been a while, especially now with this international break and everything. It's kind of been um, it's been boring to be honest right. on the football front. So this really. is what I wanted to start with. I wanted to start with if you had a button that we could just skip international break, would you press? Oh it? yeah, yes, a million me, times yes. Me too. I'd just be hammering look, that out of it. I, Look, I understand that players need to get used to each other. Like, you need to have the youngsters get used to the veterans and the national teams and all that stuff. I get it. But realistically, if they play together in some glorified friendly like the Nations League, and then they go back to club level for three months, and then they come back and play two weeks, and then they go back for three months, they're not really getting used to each other because by the time they're back again, they've gotten used to their current club level teammates. Right. So when you when they really get used to each other is ahead of the tournaments when they're practicing and warming up and all that stuff and like getting used to everybody and for the real like actual tournaments that's when it counts because everything they learn you can't convince me they're gonna remember like oh yeah Merino makes that run no you don't you know what I mean it doesn't 100%. matter it doesn't matter <laughs> and don't get me so, wrong yes, don't I'll get me wrong I love the Euros time. I love the Euros mm-hmm. I love the World mm-hmm. Cup. But also, I think I think particularly this break has been more difficult because we're coming off such a good run with Barca, like yes. four for four, the, the seven nil that we ended that kind of first it was league so run, crazy. and then it's like, oh no, now we're gonna now we're gonna go go away for a couple of weeks and yeah, and you know the seven nil is wasn't just a seven nil; it was such a commanding win. Like it wasn't <laughs> like oh okay, we've just we got lucky, we scored goals. No, we yeah. actually. Barca actually controlled it from start to finish. But the international break really ticks me off because like players like Fermin goes over, boom, injured. Pablo yeah. Torre steps in. Now, Pablo Torre has to play. And that's great. Team. He's getting international minutes Good as well. Good for him. Good for him. I'm happy for him. But he's barely getting any club level minutes. So if he'll play there, build a bit of momentum, come back to Barca, he's not really going to be in the mix. At the same level as someone like Bernal would have been, I'm really curious to see what Flick is going to do with the midfield now, given that Bernal is out. Frankie de Jong, depending on his recovery, could be out for the rest of the year, depending on whether he does undergo the operation or not. We've seen similar situations with your Dembele's, with your Ansu's, with your Umtiti's yeah. when it comes to operations. Hopefully he makes the right decision and hopefully what, you know, Whatever happens is is best for his career, but it does really pose a lot of questions, you know, because you had Bernal, you had Casado, and they're so young hmm. and they're so inexperienced, and and you had he Flick had to bet on them, and he did, and it worked well, but now you don't have Mark Bernal, who for me was one of the standout performers of preseason, and also the first. Man, I think for everyone, so he was he was genuinely amazing so you look at that and then you think okay now you don't have Frankie de Jong you don't have you have Pablo Torre you have Fermin but those are more attacking options simply right. goes for Pedri Gavi's coming back but he's more of a box to box Barca's options are extremely limited in a midfield that if you looked at it in preseason was stacked if you looked at the just on paper they had so many 100%. midfielders Hundred percent. Now it's like, who do you put in? Because you have to fit them in terms of what you're trying to do. And with Flix four two three one, you kind of need two pivots to be pivots. You don't. It doesn't work if they're both two attacking. So you can't put 100%. like a Fermin and a Pedri and then an Almo. Like it doesn't work like that. No, no. So I'm, I'm really curious. I remember with Xavi seeing Pedri kind of dropping back and like circulating with Gundogan and. Mm. And I'm wondering if that's going to become a role for him now, uh, especially with like yeah. Olmo, especially if Gabby comes back, which it looks like he's. Uh, I mean, we're, we're recording Wednesday looks night. Like he's he's very close. out Thursday. It could he could well be back training with the group by the time you're hearing this, um, right. you know. And then we kind of and uh, the wings is going to get complicated now because Ansu's back training with the group. He yep. could well be coming onto the field. Ferran uh, Torres is doing. Good thing. Yeah, he's man. showing he's showing what he can do. 
So, so be we could see like you know Rafinha's kind of dropped into that false nine. Uh, I've really been impressed with Rafinha, by the way. Yeah, lately. man, he's been so impressive. I'm gonna save that because I really want to. <laughs> okay. I really want to do an ode to him because he's been fantastic. But go on, go on. I mean, but you know, there's a lot of questions that Hansi Flick has to answer. He's he's in some respects spoiled for choice. In some respects, like you say, he's kind of limited options. Uh, and it may, you know, it may force him to kind of shake things up a little bit. Um, yeah. And I'm curious to see how he's going to do it. Yeah, I will say with Flick, one of the things, like obviously the mentality that we always knew was was kind of part of the package when it came to Hansi Flick. I'm really happy that we're seeing it because I think hmm. a lot of people were worried that when Hansi Flick came to Barca that it would be similar to what we've seen over the last couple of years, where it feels like they're lacking that that grinta, they're they're lacking that like <laughs> the cutting edge to like really, where you really watch the game and you go, oh yes, they're gonna win this. They're gonna they lack that. Now it feels like he's slowly building towards it. You can see the way the team is moving, the way the team is is training, what they what the players are saying post match, pre match. You can see there's a very clear difference. Not to say Xavi wasn't doing the right thing. He was for what he was trying to build, but. Hansi Flick now comes in with a completely different mentality. And the one player that I've really, really been impressed with how that's rubbed off on is Robert Lewandowski. I was not expecting to see him go from being, I wouldn't say an outcast, but going from being a player that many have written off already. I mean, when the season started, a lot of people wrote off Barcelona because Lewandowski was a starting striker, saying, well, he's pretty much past it now. But my gosh, he's really managed to get a good start on a turnaround for his time at Barca. And I think if he keeps going like this, he's, he's, I think he's extended his stay by a year or two at a good level, which does give Barca more time potentially to find his replacement because fact of the matter is he is aging and you do need someone yeah, yeah. to take over. Had this, had last season been his last season with Barca, I think that would have been very, um, well, chaotic, I suppose pose could be the right word because he came in spent very little time i mean in the grand scheme of things especially given the name that he came with and then left and you don't really have anyone to replace him now paul right. victor has come into the four margu went to chelsea right so even some of the options i think kind of are there some are not anymore but it really does pose a question that for me and i really love one i really would love to hear your take on this for Lewandowski. Let's say he does really well this season, gets a lot of numbers. Do you think Barca should still count on him for the next season, or do you think they should start building for the future? I think, and given his kind of relationship as well with Hansi Flick, and mm-hmm. you know, I think for me, it would make sense to keep him. If, if he has a, a great season, like we saw in his first season with mm-hmm. Barca, right. uh, I think it would, it would make sense to keep him a bit longer. Uh, my kind of yeah. thought was, after last season, my kind of thought was like, this season they're going to rotate him out, and that'll kind of like right. That's we'll what see I thought. Him, as well. Like helping uh, younger strikers, helping kind of new talent, and you know he'll get the rest that he needs as well because like he, like you say, he's not getting any <laughs> younger. Um, but that said, he's come out as competitive as ever. He's looking really strong. He's scoring goals, um, and so it's kind of like, well, why, why, why does he need to do that this season? Like, you know, he's in no rush, as, as far as yeah. I'm aware. Uh, the club's in no yeah. rush. Uh, and if he yeah. keeps if he keeps scoring goals, the fans aren't going to be in any rush either. So for me, it would make sense that he has another great season, and then maybe next season they start thinking about like rotating him out and bringing in new talent and giving um, other people kind of that opportunity up, up front. Because, I, like, like you said, there are options. There are options, but I think it's a bit early to kind of yeah. go for that kind of like key goal scorer. You know, but wh- whoever it is, I think they need time to get into it, and I think. For sure. Lewandowski is at a point in his career where he could afford to give them a bit of time. I agree with that. And I think especially if he keeps this form up. And I think, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's four games into the league season. It's still very early to call it. But I do think that he's shown a lot of promise. And if what we've seen so far is anything to go by, I think we'll see a Lewandowski now. It's not too dissimilar from the one that we saw at Bayern. Um, around the time of the A2, the Bayern peak, really, in the in their later stages, 
I think we might see that version of Lewandowski again. And if we do, I think, yeah, keep him around. Happy but then days. the question for me, yeah, but then the question for me is, players like Victor Roque, who now eyes on Real Betis, already not off to a great start. Then again, realistically, he hasn't really played for Barca since since he came from Paranaense. He's not really played much. So the last real experience he's had on a pitch in competitive games was in Brazil. Then he had a couple of games here. I don't think accum- if you really like if you count round it all up, I don't think he had what would be a total of five games since he joined Barca in minutes. So factoring that in, let's say he does well at Real Betis. For me, when he joined, I thought, okay, this is the guy that's going to take over from Lewandowski. In Barca's eyes, they've seen something in him that means that they see him as a potential. Yeah, yeah. Because they they also put out a decent amount of money for him. He wasn't cheap. Um, which, again, I mean, going back to that as well. Like we said last time, I think it's... Personally, I think it's ridiculous to to crucify a player based on his, his or her price tag. But at the same time, that's how clubs value them. So yeah, you have to I, kind I mean, of factor that in. The market but is what it is. Solely. Exactly. So people who solely focus on that and say, oh, yeah, well, he's worth 120 million. He wasn't good enough. Is it because he wasn't worth 120 million or is it because he wasn't good enough? Because he, mm. if he factually was a poor play, poor, poorly performing player, then, yes, he wasn't good enough. If you say he scored 16 goals, not 20, he doesn't live up to the price tag. That, I think, is unfair. It's a, yeah, For it's a Victor different Walker, issue. We haven't seen but, anything. We haven't seen him. We don't know if he's good enough or not. Anything. He's not had the chance to run out. Like, <laughs> no. We've just not and, seen enough of him. Exactly. And that's a shame and that, you know, that, that he's really kind of, he's, he's, he's now got this kind of like dark shadow cast across him and he's been sent off to mm. Betis, which is kind of where a lot of like Barca players end up that, you know, I that, thought about, I thought about this. I was thinking about it this morning because I was uh, looking into something to do with Real Betis. It wasn't the actor Rui Bell announcement, which was amazing. By the way. I don't know <laughs> if you've seen that yet. Phenomenal marketing on Real Betis part, but they, those guys uh, that are working like kudos to them. Because... Real uh, Real Betis, every single time I've seen an announcement, has always been so creative. Same thing with Burnley uh, in England as well. <laughs> so creative. And it's 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 really, it really, really is nice to see that. Um, but I digress. With uh, Real Betis, like you said, a lot of players end up there. I was looking at, like, Mark Bartra mm-hmm. is one. He left, came, left, went elsewhere. Like, left to Real Betis. No, he left to Dortmund, I think, then Betis. Then left somewhere else. Then came back to Betis. Now he's still at Betis, a vital part of their team, to my understanding. Um, Abde is one. Hmm. You know, a lot of players throughout the years. Um, I'm going to try and pull it's, up it's their, really, uh, their roster. But, yeah, I mean, Bayarin passed through Barca for a short period. Oh, Bayarin as well, yeah. Uh, Abde, like you say. No, no, there's, there's a good handful of players there. There's a there. good handful, right? That at some point have been through Barca, or they've come from Amasia, or or whatever. It's really and interesting. Takes them in too, and he, because... he was, I mean, the, the the game style has that yes, kind of that's... that Barca feel about it as well. Th- that, that is the thing. thing. And for me, Real Betis have always, for the last couple of years at least, they've been one of the teams that I've liked, and ah, it, never, it never really, never really clicked, clicked in my head, head why <laughs> until when I actually realized it. I was like, oh, <laughs> that's why. <laughs> it's because they resemble they resemble Barca, Barca in a in a couple, couple of ways. ways. Yeah, uh, uh, no, they they play know. football that's pretty enjoyable to watch. Um, they, they, you know, thinking about like kind of like like you said, the the announcements, their kind of digital channels, they're building a really cool community of fans. They really uh, are. And for me, like I think that's awesome. Like good for them. Uh, and that's that's really, all you've really, got to do in 2024. Is. Yeah. yeah. Also, also, I just, I just realized something, something to do with um, <laughs> with uh, with Real Betis. I did not realize that Rodri left, and I also did not realize that they signed Giovanni Lo Celso. That is a very good signing, especially because they lost Nabil, Nabil Fakir, Fakir, so they need someone to be able to do that number ten. I don't know if Lo Celso is. I don't know if I would classify him as a pure number ten the way Fakir was, but Fakir was also more of a shadow striker, I thought, for the most part. But I think Betis also have a really interesting team, and to me, it's yeah. interesting how Victor Roque fits into that because he's a very different player. Yeah, uh, um, to, to the, the striker, striker that we, the, the strikers striker. that we've seen, because I don't think he's much of a like uh, an out and out striker. I wouldn't put him as a target man. I haven't seen much of him, but from what I've seen, I'm just he wouldn't at... be a target man in my eyes. 
No, maybe not. I mean, I'm I'm curious to see how he kind of evolves and and, and develops. Yeah, because he is still super young. Like he's still got so much to go. You know, uh, still got so long to go and so long to really like hone his skills and and become the player that that he can become. I was just having a quick look at the the table. Yeah, this is not, is not the... fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> They're not off to the it's best like, best start to the season. What uh, ranking are they in currently? They're like seventeenth. They've had like a, I think two draws, oh. and and obviously they lost to Real Madrid. But they all have Real Madrid for sixty seven minutes. Hmm, that's not bad. I think, I think it's one Real, Real Betis for me have always been one of those teams that start off quite well, slow and then they, they sort, sort of pick up and then they end up mid table. Yeah, I mean, here's that's pretty been. much been the story of of them. Um, I also did. I forgot they had Mark Roca as well. Mark Roca has had an interesting career, man. That man was at Bayern for a long time, and then didn't really do much, and then kind of floated around until he landed at Real Betis. I think he's on. Oh, oh, four and a half million from Leeds United. That is crazy, though. That's crazy. I thought he. Would. I remember there was a decent amount of hype around him a couple of years back. It's kind of sad how he fell off the way he did. Same I mean, thing with you... Pablo Fornales for me was one of the, honestly, one of my favorite <laughs> players for a while. And he's just completely disappeared. He's just gone off the grid. We are digressing. And I'm going to take this opportunity because you, Le- you mentioned <laughs> Leeds to kind of yeah. reel you back in and take you back around to the man, Rafinha. Because the Oof, last time we saw yes. him playing in a Barca shirt was uh, just a glorious thing to see. Absolutely. And that was a brilliant segue, by the way. <laughs> that was I do what I can. <laughs> you did well. Uh, no, Rafinha, Rafinha was amazing. I mean, the thing for me, Rafinha has always been one of those players since he joined Barca. Where, you know, I've seen a lot of people saying, "Oh, you know, he's just not got the Barca level." I've always liked him because he has that perseverance around him all the time. He always keeps trying. He'll do a, he'll try one on one skill thirty times. He'll fail. He'll try number thirty one because he believes in himself. Hundred percent. And to me, that's part of the Barca style as well is being able to say, "Well, you know what? No, I'll, I believe. I'll try. I'll keep trying." And that really personifies him as a player, I think. And we've seen that more now, even more now under Hansi Flick, because I thought under Xavi that he was just a machine, he constantly running. And now under Hansi Flick, it's like it's doubled now. He doesn't stop. No, no, and he's, he's everywhere. <laughs> and it's he's just, working it's, hard. He's working hard. He really, really is. And you can tell how he's slowly become a more important player for the team. You can hmm. tell the players around him, the way they move, the way they find him. He has this type of aura around him now in the dressing room, I think. Not to glorify him heavily, but just to say that I think he's really, really grown. And I think he's earned his spot in the team for Barcelona. He's, he's one of the come. captains now, right? Uh, I want to say Testegan, Araujo, say... Frankie, Rafinha, and Pedri. Oh, that's right. He was. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. So the players in the dressing room, I mean, they vote the, the captains and the, yeah. the players in the dressing room clearly agree with, with your yeah. valuation. With my assessment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> That's good. Um, no, but yeah, I mean, he is, he is one of those players that I think might, you know, there are players we've seen over the years where they don't have the like most amazing level of technical skill, but my God, do they fight? Same thing with Paulinho, who mm-hmm. on his topic retired recently. Um, didn't wasn't the most technically gifted player in terms of skills and showboating, but he definitely got the job done, and he fought all the time. Rafinha has more skill. I think it would be an insult to Rafinha if I said he had the technical level of Paulinho, but but he he's not one of those players where you go, oh, he's gonna completely send this player to the shop in a one on one. But he'll beat him, and if he doesn't, he'll get the ball back anyway. So yeah, yeah absolutely, and kind of evens out. He's, He's a fighter. Just, just think back to the Champions League last season. How many times did the Rafinha come in and 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 just leave everything on the pitch? So clutch, just give it Such all, and, and you know you you forget these things quickly, and and the fans forget these things quickly. Yeah, yeah, but he gave yeah, it all. Because yeah, and I think that's kind of a thing as well with football nowadays. I mean, not to say it wasn't back then, but I think nowadays because everything is on social media, everything is so quick, everything right. goes by the second it's over, you forget about it. But like even just I've been rewatching a lot of the the Paris uh, Barca game last year. Rafinha was so good. He didn't stop. He didn't stop trying the whole game. He got the goal and didn't stop trying. 
and really, like you said, left it all on the pitch. Yeah, man. That's the kind of player you want to see in a Barca shirt. That's the kind of player you want to see in a Barca exactly, shirt. Exactly. Whatever happens, as long as they couldn't have given any more, like, you've got to be happy. Obviously, if it's a win, then even better. But, you know, at the end of the day, you come up against who you come up against and, and the tactics are what they are. And But as a player, I think, you know, their job is to give 100%. And, and you know, if it's over 90 minutes or it's over 45 minutes, but that's, that's their job. They've got to go out there and do it. Exactly, exactly. And I think for him, he's he's definitely done that all the time, every single time. And I think that's why, like, when you look at previously where people would say, oh, why has he been picked? Like, oh, we have this player or this player or that player. Because he keeps fighting and that means something. That means something. Yeah. And Hansi Flick has recognized that. The players have recognized that. Yeah, you deserve to be one of the five main leaders of this team on paper, at least. Because you definitely will be on the pitch as well. And I am genuinely so happy for him because there was a time where he was one of the players that people, the Barca mm-hmm. fans for the most part, didn't really enjoy watching and kind of the first, like whenever there was like, oh, rumors of Barca might go for this guy. Oh, give them Rafinha. We'll, we'll even pay you. If, <laughs> it's like, you know, that was a lot. And I think credit to him. He stood his ground. He showed what he's oh, capable nice. of. He's coming he's with it. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, to, to be honest, though, it's a similar thing with Ferran Torres, but I will say Ferran has not reached the heights of Rafinha yet in my eyes. I don't know if he will. I'm still very iffy on Ferran because he'll do very well one game and he'll be very poor the next. He's a very hot and cold player. Kind of mm-hmm. reminds me of Coutinho in his later time with Barca um, because he does strike me very much as a confidence player. So when he's mm-hmm. confident, he's on top of the world. Absolute world beater. The second he loses, no, yeah, his absolutely. So when he when he's when he's good, he's so good. It's curtains, yeah. And when he's not, it's curtains. It's over. So I don't know. Like last year, we saw glimpses of like the Ferran that I would like to think Barca saw when they signed him from City and City. I mean, saw that that run at the start Valencia, of the season but, when it was yeah. like Tiburon and everything, that kind of like, yeah, 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 run, yeah. It was like, man, this guy's this like it's a different Ferran. Like, where's this guy come from? He's here. He's finally kind of like grown into it. And then it like tapered yeah. off a little bit. Um, it was a shame too, because I really thought that okay, finally Barca have the solution to their Lewandowski's aging and the lack right. of a left winger problem. Finally, and then he just went off the grid again. But and like then say, when he goes with the national team, it's like, where is this Ferran Torres? <laughs> Why are we not seeing him? And obviously, it's not that simple because you know tactics and the players mm-hmm. around you and how they move and how you're. Because you kind of move relative to your teammates, so if he's making certain, 100%. we saw that a lot with we saw that a lot with Neymar as well back in when he was in Barca, um, and whoever and Alba and whoever else was getting shifts at left back, that because Neymar likes to, whether he liked to drift in or stay out, depending on what the left back would do, they would either clash or not clash yeah. at all, and it's the same thing with Ferran now. If if he moves into the, into the half space and Pedri likes to move into the half space. You kind of have a problem. So that's 100%. also a thing that maybe he just doesn't fit in. And there's no th- there's nothing wrong with that. But at that point for Barca, you might just want to cut your losses and get it over with and get some good money for him while you still can. Because he's still very young. Not very young. He's still quite young. He's still pretty young. He's still pretty young. 20... Not 22, right? He's older than 22, isn't he? Is he, is he, still, is he still 22? There's no way he's still 22. Let's, let's, uh, he's 24. 24. 24. There you go. Okay. Okay. That's still young. That's still young. He's got plenty of time. He's still young. Yeah, yeah. And he is, and he is a quality player, player, man. But I just don't think he's it for Barcelona. He's maybe just not a fit. And that's okay. But it's a shame to have a player like that just getting essentially wasted on the bench at a club. Because he could be playing his trade elsewhere. Absolutely. And that spot could be for someone else. That could Absolutely. Fit the club more, so. I don't know. Maybe Hansi Flick will give I really us more glimpses. So. These, these I like really, really moments hope so. of 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 uh, 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 brilliance. Just, the the, the yeah. tiburon, These moments when the tiburon appears. Uh, maybe Hansi Flick can can get that a little bit more often. I'm going to try really another. So. I'm going to try another seg uh, because there's Go a player that we're going to be talking about more soon. I hope because he does have the work ethic. He does have the consistency and hopefully he's going to be back training. Like I say, as of recording this, he, he's not yet, but I think by the time you're listening, he may well be training with the group. Uh, Gabby, it's, Gabby, Gabby. Gabby. it's Gabby, Gabby, Gabby. I think it's too soon to say like, we'll uh, see him at Montelivi this, this weekend. 
Um, I think so too. I think Monaco next great. Thursday, like that'd be a cool moment to bring him out later on in the match and and give him. Yeah, some minutes. I would say like maybe last twenty. It, just, it depends. It depends on how his like his recovery is going and 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 the injury. Absolutely. Obviously, we we don't know. We can't comment. But man, am I keen to see him back on the pitch? I cannot wait. Gavi is one of those players that really, for me, is just such a Barca player. Like he hmm. just he bleeds Barca. He. It's so beautiful to watch because it's one of those where over the years we've seen players for other clubs like, um, I don't know, Fede Valverde, is, he comes to mind. Marcos Llorente comes to mind. The players where you're like, oh, they really just, they go, they'll put their head in front of the ball if they have to just to get a tackle in because that's how much they love their club. Gavi is that multiplied in tenfold. 100%. And it makes me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> because it's such a breath of fresh air from the other more aesthetic midfielders or the more like showboater wingers or whatever type of players you have around it. He's such a different player yeah. and he's capable of so much. Cause the thing is a lot of people I remember when he first came to the four were like, Oh, you know, he's just a bulldozer. He's just another Casemiro. It's like, no, he's technically I mean, he, extremely he did come skilled. Careering in on on several occasions, and, and he did, he did, he did, <laughs> <laughs> he did. But he, and, but you're obviously right. Like that's the thing, you know. It's like he's not. That's that's the thing that I really love about him. And also, he's super young, which means he has so much time to grow and mold into a player that could be such a wild card for any team in the world. I think, but he's such a fighter. For the most part, tackles within the confines of the law. <laughs> and then add to that that he's technically skilled. He can beat a man one on one. He knows how to do the little flicks and the little the little things he needs to do to shimmy away from a defender. He's not just a, a, a one dimensional tackler or a one dimensional dribbler or he really can do a lot. He's a very well rounded midfielder. Obviously, still a very raw talent, but my goodness, if he's not an exciting. But he, but he's got the head as well. He's got the head for it. He's, you know, mentally, he really does. He really does. Yeah, and maybe he doesn't think about much other than football. I don't know, <laughs> but but when he's on the I pitch, mean, I, when I he's on the like pitch, that, he's there. Yeah. And and you know, we talked about yeah. you know, giving it all. He's one of them. He's one of them that you know. What he's Absolutely. had broken jaws. He's had he's had like a variety of injuries. Obviously, this one yeah, he's been out with yeah. as a recording. It's uh, 316 days since he got injured. Um, yeah, yeah. Maybe as, as you're listening, it'll be 317, 18. Much... By the time we're at Montalivi, it'll be 320. So Monaco will be 323, is... 4. Um, you're talking almost a year. But we're talking almost a year that he's not played. And you know, I remember the last time we recorded, we talked about Mark Bernal, who will be out for around a year. And we're talking about like at that age, at that point in your career, that can be really dangerous and really worrying. And so Absolutely. I really like, but but I think Chav- like I think Gabby sorry has been has been careful with his recovery. Like they've Seems brought him like back definitely. slowly. Uh, they've kept him. You know, he's been training in isolation for quite a while now. He has. Um, he has. And I think I, it's I can't so wait to good see him as training well. with the group, but, but I can't wait to see him like just on go the back out on the yeah. pitch. Absolutely. Maybe they'll maybe the they'll thing, keep it. Maybe they'll wait until they're the back of Mondrique and they can do it in front of home fans. That would be that would be poetic. Also, because you're not really in any rush to get it back. Realistically, right. absolutely, you're not in a rush. Absolutely not. I hope. So. I think that would be really. Let's nice. see. Let's but see. I will say this: it is, um, it does make me happy that Barcelona's medical staff now are able to take care of the injured players in a different way to how they were before. Because before we saw a lot of relapses, crazy amount of relapses, whether that's because of the players or because of the pro, the regimen, the regimen they're following, but it wasn't working for a lot in, in a lot of cases. So now you see players like Gavi, who is crucial to Barcelona, make no mistake, but they're taking their time. And so Fati mm-hmm. could be crucial. I genuinely still believe in him. Yeah, a lot. I still think he has a place in this team. I think, especially because it's that left wing that's pretty much unmarked now. Um, no one has really, really claimed that spot. So I think that left wing is there for the taking, and I definitely believe in him to step up and take that. Hundred percent. Especially because he's so young and he's shown so much potential over the years that I don't think anyone really doubts it. I think people who doubt it are just people who've lost hope. But realistically, <laughs> what other option do you have? 
you couldn't br- Barca decided not to bring in Nico or Nico decided not to join Barca, regardless of which he didn't. He stayed at Athletic Club, and other options didn't really appeal to Barca or the other way around. So, what do you do? You have Ferran Torres who can play left wing. You have Ansu Fati who can play left wing. Almo could make a job. He could do the job there, but I would much rather have him as a number ten. I think anyone else would agree. So. What do you really do? You could play Balde at left wing, but then what do you do with the left back position? You don't have a Joe Cancelo this year. You don't have a Serginho Dest. You have to, I just spilled my coffee. You have to put someone else in. So I mean, we I'm really passionate think, about yeah, Barcelona. Like, I literally just spilled my coffee. So. <laughs> Wonderful. The, theme, <laughs> the, the, the passion of, of Gabby and, and Ansu Fati coming back. I mean, you know, we yeah. started off by talking about the problems both in terms of limitations, but also in terms of uh, like choosing for, for Hansi Flick. But we could be talking about come Christmas. We could be talking about like a, a Ansu Fati and Lamine Jamal on the wings. We could be talking about like Ooh. Danny Olmo, Rafinha, Lewandowski, uh, like this, this kind of forward like positions. There's choice there. There's, there's talent there. Um, yeah. Pedri and Gabi doubling up again in the midfield. Fermin coming like, that's exciting. So many options. Suddenly, so many options. it gets really exciting. Yeah. And I was thinking about this uh, earlier today. Um, I was thinking Almo, Lamin, Ansu, and then whoever else is striker. My goodness. Suddenly, like, like... Incredible. I mean, like, let's see where they go. Because we start off the season four for four. Uh, ended that kind of, like, first run into the international break with a 7-0. <laughs> Against Valladolid, okay, Valladolid, but but they held off Real Madrid for almost an hour. Like, yeah, it wasn't a gift, and like you said, it was such a convincing win. I think come Christmas we could see a very different Barca to what we saw even just a few weeks ago. Um, yeah, no, for sure, and it's a sure. it's a very exciting prospect. Yeah, and it's also so early, and we're still we're seeing so many positive signs. I don't even want to imagine what it's going to look like a couple of months from now when Hansi Flick has really implemented. Even more of his key ideas. Yeah. Some of the players are more fit and more known within the system. Oh my God. And especially if Ansu Fati is there, if Gavi is there, and if they're really doing well, it's going to be a really. Well, hopefully, really it's going to be a lot of fun. Hopefully, it's going to be a lot of fun. Hopefully. Hopefully. Uh, we've got a couple of minutes left. Montelibi on Sunday. Sunday? Hey, on Sunday. I want to play Girona in. What is going to be a difficult match in a difficult stadium? Sunday at 4.15 p.m. But local time. Just for those. It's a nice afternoon match. Um, it is. We Oriol could see, Romeo. We could see Sparks. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Um, Girona are such an interesting side as well. I've always had a soft spot for them. And yeah. um, I'm really interested to see how they're going to fare this time because... They're coming off of a good two seasons. I think for, for all accounts, I think last season was pretty good. The season gonna, before that was be, very good. But they've got a rough run now. They're going to be thinking about the Champions League. they got to host Barca. And Barca yep. in, in a real good you know, run of form. Uh, it's not going to be easy for Girona. No, no, it's absolutely not. And also they lost Artem Dovbik. So that's also going to be a problem uh, that I think they're still coping with. You know? And also, like, for me, the way I see it, right, they, Eric Garcia went back to Barcelona, and then the, and then they got Oriol Romeo back. But did they really need Oriol Romeo? I don't think the midfield was where they were lacking. So I feel like that might have been not a, not such a good investment on their part. Um, but it will be interesting to see. I'm definitely not as fearful for Barca against Girona at this point as I was last season. Because last season they looked a different animal. I mean, they were phenomenal that season and the season before. They no, were no, they came to Montjuic and really, really last season. Yeah, uh, so you know, you. it's it's it makes me happy. <laughs> it makes me very happy to see them do that. Not against Barcelona, but in general, I'm happy to see their success. So um, we'll discuss next week. Join us next week as we discuss the outcome of this Girona Barca match, and also Champions League is back. In its new yes. format, more Champions League yes. than ever, but Barca will be travelling to Monaco next week. Uh, to play their, their first match of the season in Europe. For now, though, Omar, thank you very much. Yeah.
Thank, thank you. you. A pleasure as always. Much. Yeah, yeah. Likewise. Uh, thank you to everyone who tuned in. We will be seeing you next week. And on that note, I guess stay safe and have fun watching Barca on <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> Adeu. Adeu. I think we're within like valley here. <laughs> <laughs>